I'm very pleased to congratulate the Federalist Society on the occasion of its 25th anniversary. I doubt that those who met on law school campuses 25 years ago to found the Society could have envisioned the current level of its membership or the number of chapters around the country. The Federalist Society's educational programs encourage discussion about the Constitution and law and reflect a commitment to vigorous and open debate. The Society takes the Constitution and the rule of law seriously, and that is important in maintaining a free society. I commend the Society on its 25 years of active participation in our democracy, and I look forward to congratulating the Society on its 50th anniversary as well. By design, the structural features of our Constitution are essential to the protection of liberty and human dignity, placing a premium on property rights and freedom, and a preference for free markets rather than centralized government control. Somewhere along the way, our legal system took a wrong turn, occasionally at the hands of well-meaning people who were looking to address injustices, and other times at the instigation of those seeking to use the justice system as a tool for their own brand of social and political engineering. Decades of liberal orthodoxy resulted in courts that too often failed to interpret the text of the Constitution as it was written by the Founding Fathers, and judges who failed to respect their limited role in relation to the democratic process under our Constitution. The rule of law was no longer the rule. On law school campuses across the country, legal argument became a strictly one-sided affair. One of the uh, bad things, really, uh, for many years in the 1970s and 1980s uh, was how one-sided uh, teaching had become in many of the nation's leading law schools. Uh, the dogma that was being preached essentially by liberal professors uh, went only one way. There were huge areas of a constitutional law course that were as dull as they could be because the uh, issues were all settled. Congress had total authority to regulate anything it chose to under the Commerce Clause or any other power. We were very frustrated to find that on the law school campuses there was no conservative or libertarian student organization and we were very frustrated that conservative ideas weren't being heard. We wanted very much to see some of the ideas that President Reagan was bringing to Washington brought to the law school campuses. One Harvard professor stood up and said that the first year of law school was deliberately designed to destroy students' minds by requiring them to reconcile things that could not be reconciled and to justify an obviously unjust society. And he said, I have to catch a train and he'll shot out the door. There was no question, period. The Federalist Society was founded by students who believed the rule of law and the Framers' Constitution deserved a place in law schools. They realized that the prospect of transforming the legal culture and furthering limited constitutional government would have to start with inspiring the hearts and minds of law students and young lawyers. The idea was simple yet effective. Education through open-minded debate, testing ideas, deepening curiosity and enthusiasm, and finding truth by discussing real issues from different points of view, including those they didn't necessarily agree with. We decided early on that to present conservative ideas, if we just had people come in and speak about them, you'd get a limited audience. And we thought, you know, let, let's present both sides. From the beginning, the seminars that I've had anything to do with or attended, sponsored by the Federalist Society, have uh, indeed uh, um, presented both sides. And I think that's, that's quite important. Federalist Society events quickly became known as an environment where all opinions were treated with equal respect. Our conferences are one of the few places in public life where you really get an honest exchange of ideas. Not only do we have good and valuable debates, but the people who may not agree with the Federalist Society philosophically are happy to participate because they know they're going to have a chance to get their ideas heard uh, fairly and have a vigorous discussion. We have had not only debates between conservatives and liberals, but lots of debates between different kinds of conservatives, and our membership includes many different kinds of conservatives. We have members who are more traditionalist, we have members who are more libertarian, we have some members who believe very strongly uh, that the courts should always exercise judicial restraint, 
and other members who feel that the courts should vigorously enforce the original Constitution, even if that means striking down a lot of laws. ACLU leaders and spokespeople are regularly invited to speak at forums and programs and debates and panels that are organized by the Federalist Society. And I think that's the way you exchange and grow and, and, and you get outside of yourself a little bit. And I think the Federalist Society has done that, not only at the law schools, but I think nationwide. It's important for law students to be exposed to ideas about law and the rule of law and limited government that uh, permeate their thinking about what it is that courts are doing. They read a lot of cases and their legal realism is the sort of reigning theory. Judges can do whatever they want to do and it's all political and so forth. And to have students engage with the idea that no, it's, that's not the way it ought to be and that's not the way it needs to be. Judges too can be constrained by rules. They must be constrained by rules if you're going to have a, them be exercising power that is legitimate. Um, it's an important thing for lawyers to, to grapple with and to at least have introduced to them. What started as a set of small on-campus Federalist Society clubs quickly took on a broader and more overarching role in the legal system. It also had a major impact on the law and the legal profession itself. Uh, first of all, by providing, again, a counterpoint to uh, some of the liberal approaches of the American Bar Association, uh, then becoming a watchdog uh, in regard to the uh, ABA, uh, and then, of course, providing an opportunity for lawyers who had enjoyed their law school experience in the Federalist Society to continue uh, in the same vein uh, through the uh, lawyer chapters around the country. The natural outgrowth of the Federalist Society's successful educational work on law school campuses is a growing infrastructure of lawyers across the nation. The Society is building a community of legal opinion leaders who have a deep appreciation for the rule of law as guaranteed by our constitutional system and who are committed to fostering the application of this idea in the legal, judicial, and policy worlds. We start with young, talented law students, move them through our campus chapters, integrate them into our lawyers' chapters around the country upon graduation, and provide a community that's the backbone for finding opportunities uh, to foster the application of our principles. I don't think anyone anticipated that it would be anything like as big of an organization of lawyers as it's become. Through its work on law school campuses and through thousands of citizen lawyers practicing at all levels of the law, the Federalist Society is bringing change, airing the issues in open, honest debate, bringing different sides together for meaningful, respectful dialogue, and returning to an emphasis on the rule of law, our structural constitution, limited government, and freedom. The law was the last of the great disciplines to receive an analysis from the conservative intellectual revival. So it, it's, it's rhythm has been different. The heroic age of, of the conservative revival was in the 1980s uh, in the uh, defeat of communism. But the heroic age for the struggle to restore the rule of law is right now. I think that the, the balance is, is shifting, but the progress to date certainly suggests that it, uh, it's the, that our side is the one with momentum. I think that'll continue to be the case, and I'm very optimistic about where we will be in the future. I think a hundred years from now, the Federalist Society uh, will be known for having reset the terms of debate within the legal system and for having uh, revived an appreciation for uh, our constitutional structure. The need for honest, open debate will continue to grow in importance and relevance well into the future. New challenges come up all the time. In recent years, of course, we've had to deal with the problem of terrorism. That's become a, that has created all sorts of constitutional and, and other legal issues. The society has had programs dealing with that and with many other new issues that wouldn't have occurred to me as the primary issues facing our country back in the 80s when I first became familiar with the society. Indeed, the Federalist Society has made an indelible mark providing a platform for an examination of constitutional issues that helps maintain and protect our vibrant democracy. I'd never imagined that there'd be a chapter in, uh, 
at virtually every major law school in the country, which is the case now. And I certainly never imagined that uh, the largest chapter in the country would be at Harvard Law School, for Pete's sake. That, uh, that is really, really a surprise. I thought it had no prospects for going beyond, you know, be, a, be sort of a club for a while, then when the students graduated, it would disappear. And I think it has become one of the most, perhaps the most important development in American law in the last 25 years. They really show that a tiny number of people can make a big difference in a very short period of time. For 25 years, the Federalist Society has fostered limited constitutional government through spirited open debate, working to reorder priorities within the legal system, to place a premium on individual liberty, traditional values, and the rule of law. Since the 1970s, we as a country have moved closer to these ideals. There's much more to be done, but as the society celebrates a quarter century, there's a sense of optimism and hope in knowing that an already large community of conservative and libertarian students and lawyers continues to grow, making their mark in the legal, judicial, and policy worlds. And so we celebrate the past as well as the promise of a future, one where respect for our Constitution as it was written and for limitations on government power bestow the blessings of the rule of law on generations of Americans to come. The Federalist Society will continue to play its unique role, for debate brings together differing opinions. Debate lets us test new ideas. Debate moves the argument forward and leads us to the truth.